Hey friends, welcome to my next project. It is not a Skidoo Land, but it is a 1946 through 1950, I'm not sure exactly which year this particular one is, Johnson Seahorse HD 25. In other words, it's an 80 year old, two and a half horsepower, two cylinder, two stroke boat motor. I got it from a buddy who recently sold his cottage and he found it in a wood pile under a tarp. There's your throttle. Fuel tank is built into it. Primer. There's the carburetor. I'm gonna have to yank that thing off. So way back when I did have this thing running, uh, it never ran well. It, um, I could get it to start. It would run fine for about 30 seconds and then it would lean out and then quit. And then it was practically impossible to start. Never really looked into this thing. Never gave it a fair chance. I've also got the lower cowl for this thing too. This sort of sits in here. I love how everything is metal. No plastic at all on this thing. It wasn't that long ago that I was considering taking off the actual motor part of it and just using the foot and putting an electric motor on top of that thing. This is how reverse works on these things. Let me go backwards. Flip it around. How cool is that? So first up we'll do a compression test and we'll check for spark. I went to go connect my uh, spark tester to this thing and I realized I'm not going to be able to use it. All right, so we got fire in the bottom hole. Check the top. All right, we got spark on both. All right, let's go for compression now. See if we can be just as lucky. So apparently these are around 75 PSI. So we'll see what we can get. Throttle wide open. Oh man, rocking it. Right on 80 PSI. So far we're doing pretty, uh, pretty all right. Same, 80. To tell you the truth, I was about ready to throw this thing in the garbage or give it away. Wasn't really that interested in fixing it up. And then we got our cottage and I thought, man, that would be so much better than a quiet, efficient trolling motor. This would be so much better. I'm gonna go out of my way right now and try not to lose too many parts. Right, check the gas too. It was fresh a couple years ago. Definitely smelt worse. This is still attached. Go get the primer. There we go. Primer's through. Jiggle. And we're free. Okay. Electronics are in here. I'm going to get to that later. I was going to check the points, make sure that's all good, but um, that spark looked pretty, pretty strong. Now, I suppose I should have checked this before I uh, remove the fuel tank. But there's a little pin right there uh, that's attached to the float so if there was fuel in there and the float was working correctly that pin would raise figure the sooner i get this thing out of my way the better now i can't remember if i used the floor last time to do this but uh i know this isn't how you're supposed to but uh i don't remember this being on there that tight about the threads. I really wasn't hitting it that hard. Check that out. See what we got here. So what I'd like to do is I need to check my gaps. I've got that written down uh, somewhere. Verify that. And then I'm probably going to remove all of this because to get at the carburetor, it's looking like I'll have better access. Alternatively, I just remove the carburetor. 
Can't wait to see the look on my wife's face when she sees me strapping this bad boy to the back of the canoe. All right, so that's uh, like medium length. I'll remember where these go. No doubt about it. Oh, there we go. We're free. Except we're attached to our fuel line still. All right. You can see the side of the piston right there. I'll uh, see if I can turn the prop so you can see it spinning, going back and forth. Pretty cool. Closer inspection reveals that this, these are the intake, and this whole thing is the exhaust. So intake looks pretty clean. I don't know why this one's a different color. It's like... Uh, orange looking and then the exhaust sides uh pretty carved up so we'll clean that up a little bit so here's the carburetor slash part of the exhaust that's kind of weird how they did that i don't know if heating up the carburetor via the exhaust is uh to help the fuel mixture but anyways the exhaust leaves the cylinders and then comes out here and then goes down and then back into the foot and down further. Same sort of deal. There's some a little more gunk on this side. Try and get it out and have it not fall down into the foot. Oh, we got a big piece coming out. Look at that. All right, got her cleaned up a little bit with some uh, carburetor cleaner. I suppose part of the reason this thing's so carbon up is the uh, oil fuel mixture ratio is 16 to one on this thing. Take a look at this cork float. Okay, and this is the, uh, the primer. Set that aside. Oh, looks not too bad. Three screws. In no particular order, let's try the middle one first. See if uh, parts fall out. Nope, still held in. Although you can see the bottom of it now. I guess that's the seat. There's no uh, rubber seat in these things. Everything's cork and leather. So we'll keep, keep taking screws out. I wonder if that thing's pressed in there. I'm sure somebody watching this knows exactly what's going on. Okay, so there's your air intake. There's, oh. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. A little bit of junk in there. Oh, I see a little screen in there. Jeez, this thing is in really good shape. All the junk's on the outside of the motor. I'll go spray some brake clean through this thing. And uh, I think I'm gonna swap it back together. Still haven't figured out how to take the cork out. However, I held it upside down and shot a bunch of carb cleaner up into it. And a ton of little pieces of whatever, presumably cork bits, came out. Yeah, there's the screen. So, oh yeah, there's some stuff stuck in that. Clean that off a little better. I keep calling it brake clean. Brake clean. It's not brake clean, it's carburetor cleaner. Forgot to turn the camera on, but I got her slot back together. This guy's under spring tension, so you kind of have to hold it down while you put the screws in. There's the float pin. I threw in a couple, uh, found some O-rings. There's not a lot, not a huge load on these. They just need to stop the gas from leaking through. So hopefully those are uh, fuel safe. And uh, other than that, we're pretty well ready to go. WD-40 is the best degreaser. I swear by it. It's got detergent in it, which gets all the grime. It doesn't stink. I'm sure this would have been obvious in a manual, but I just realized that this is another sort of adjustment I gotta find a manual for this thing. On she goes.
There you go. As long as that doesn't pop off, nobody loses a finger. Let's see how easy this is. Let's see if this just slides in. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh wow. Huh. This is like a, yeah, super dry rubber. So we'll try to leave that alone. Okay. That goes like that. Let's see what's in here now. Well, and I bet this thing hasn't been opened in a while. Oh, okay. So this looks like a cam. I'm guessing that's spinning around inside of this. Is where you get your water pressure from? After a little bit of tapping and prying, I wasn't getting very far, so I figure I may as well do some research so I don't break anything needlessly. Anyway, turns out this little guy is the water pump and it whips around inside of this and that forces enough water up the tube to cool this thing. To get this off, you just slide it off. That is located with this little pin which lives right here. I just pulled it out with my fingers. After that, screwdriver if you need it, pop this guy off, it just slides up. Not much going on underneath of there, other than that you can finally see the, uh, the water hose here. So the pump whips around and the water goes up here. Just a wee little gear. Pleasantly surprised to see how well lubricated it is in there. I'm gonna throw some grease at this thing, put it all back together, and then we're gonna uh, put in a trash can full of water and see if we can't get it started. Line that up. That's it. There's your primer, and there's your adjustment. See what we're working with here. All right, I need to find some gas. See if I can rob some out of this thing. Don't need much. Just want to uh, see if I can get this thing started. This is the ratio we're shooting for, 16 to one. On a half a liter of gas, I need about 30 mil of oil to get my uh, 16 to one. Well, that's closer to 40, but whatever. All right, let's give it a couple pulls and see what happens. Okay, that feels weird. Something feels weird with the recoil. Okay, I guess I had it on there too tight. That was pretty cool. So uh, let's go fill a bucket and uh, see if I can keep it running for more than a minute. on me yeah and that's that's what I was doing last year I run for a bit and then it just kind of quits I don't think it's overheating just yet carburetor you're still stone cold heads warm but it's not crazy hot yeah that's exactly what it was doing last year it's got fuel I got this guy turned in all the way and then backed off just a smidge. I'll close the other one too. I don't know if that'll make a difference. Okay. 
So this guy seems to affect its running. Get some more water in that bucket. There's a lot of cavitation going on. I don't want the pump to run dry. Here's the other guy I was talking about. And it is super sensitive. Couldn't get this thing started. I had it about one turn out. I shut it all the way, got it to kick, wouldn't stay running. And now I've got it about uh, half out, maybe a little less. So I think, so it's, there's the water pump and I think that's the telltale. Now, I've also got holes in the front, but I don't know. I can't imagine the one on top, otherwise it would be squirting water all over the spark plugs. And also there's a shroud that comes in front here that I will be putting back on. So I'm not sure if there are any other telltales on this thing other than the ones right there, but uh, I'm pretty sure the water pump is working. One thing I did read in a forum was that because the carburetor is part of the exhaust, that if these things overheat, they don't run anyway because the carburetor gets so hot, it just boils the fuel. So I'm not super concerned with it overheating, especially with a 16 to 1 fuel ratio. Let's see if I'm done without pumping it. I have to keep it at a relatively low RPM, otherwise it just kicks all the water out of the bucket. But it seems to be running halfway decent right now. It's definitely a sensitive instrument. I just had it running for nearly 20 minutes in this bucket. So I think the next stop from here is to figure out how to attach this to a canoe with no transom. This thing's so cool. Now I know nobody likes a two-part video, but uh, there's still another 10 inches of ice on my lake and it's going to be a while before that melts. So I will be back. This will go on a canoe and we will have some fun. In the meantime, I'm getting busy working on the aluminum motor mount for this thing. I'm going to side mount it. I was going to do it out of wood, but I prefer working with metal. So I think I'm going to go that route. That'll be my next video. We'll see you soon. Cheers.